With 2023 right around the corner, many of us are setting goals for the new year. And so I thought I would talk a little bit about why goal setting is a good thing just in general, and then especially apply it to goal setting and comic book collecting. And then at the end, I'm going to share some of my goals for 2023 when it comes to collecting. Now, of course, there's been whole books written about goal setting, so by no means is this going to be an exhaustive study, but at least some introductory ideas about why this can be such an important thing. So to start off with, I thought I'd share that I think goal setting is very helpful, first of all, because it creates motivation. So for example, let's say you're a fan of the black suit Spidey, and so you want to get the first appearance of the black costume in Amazing Spider-Man number 252, and so you set a goal that in 2023, you're going to get yourself a high-grade copy of that book. Well, all of a sudden, once you set that as a goal, motivation starts to well up inside of you and you start thinking, hey, yeah, I really do want that amazing Spider-Man number 252. It's not something that is just kind of, I kind of want it, but I really do want it. And then that motivation then creates energy inside of you that then leads you to give greater and sustained effort towards achieving that goal which in this case, of course, is getting that copy of ASM 252. And once you're energized, you all of a sudden start organizing your thoughts so that you can come up with a plan of action to know the necessary steps you need to take to achieve your goal. After all, unless we're someone like Jeff Bezos, we all have a very limited amount of money and a limited amount of time. And setting goals helps us to know how to focus the time and money that we do have. And so it helps you say yes to the things that you need to say yes to, to achieve your goal. So in this example of trying to get this ASM 252, maybe you say, well, I need to say yes to another shift at work so that all of a sudden I have a little bit more money that I can put towards that book. Or maybe you say yes to selling a book that you like that's in your collection that's not nearly as important to you as that ASM 252. And so, for example, something I had to do this past year to get some books that I wanted was sell off my copies of Sandman number one and number eight. Now, those are really cool books. Obviously, the first Sandman and then the first appearance of death. But they weren't nearly as important to me as some of the other books that I got last year. And so I said yes to selling them. And I was sad to see them go, but not nearly as sad as I was happy to get the books that I did get. Setting goals often means choosing between two options that you like. So on the one hand, I liked having Sandman number one and number eight. But on the other hand, I liked having Iron Man number one much more. And so I sold those books to make it possible for me to get that Iron Man. And deciding between these options also means that there are certain things that we have to say no to. And so maybe we have to say no to going out to eat as often. Perhaps you go out two or three times a week and you decide, hey, well, I'm going to cut back at least one meal a week that I'm going out. And instead, I'm going to take the money that I would have spent in a restaurant and put it in my ASM 252 fund. And if you do that, you know, once a week, all of a sudden that's $40 a month. And within a few months, probably half a year, you're able to get a nice copy of ASM 252. Or maybe it means saying no to buying another comic that you would like, but that you wouldn't love nearly as much. Obviously, we're all going to choose different things to say yes to and different things to say no to. But something I've had to do over the past couple of years in order to buy the real older keys that I've wanted is to say no to buying as many new comics on New Comic Day. And that's been a hard sacrifice. I haven't enjoyed that, but I've enjoyed more having some of these awesome keys that are now part of my collection. Now, of course, we're all going to have different goals. So maybe your goal is to get new books uh, on the day that they come out. And if that's the case, that's awesome. You know, just my personal goal is to get some of these older keys, especially first appearances or first solo series of characters that I love. And so we have to choose between those. You know, do you want the older keys? Well, that probably means you're going to have to get less newer comics. 
Uh, but if you like the newer comics, that's awesome. But it's probably going to mean less older keys. And so something I do, I've done since I still love reading new comics is get a subscription to Marvel Unlimited. And so I'm still able to read as much as I did earlier digitally, but I just don't own them. And it certainly makes me sad and it's a loss. But again, what I feel that I have gained for my own personal goals far outweighs what I have lost. And so each of us just has to decide what is really important to you. And there's no right or wrong answer to that, but just be aware that you have to make choices and you always are making choices. Whether you're doing that intentionally or not, you're always making choices. Whenever you put your time and money into something, you are deciding not to put your money and time into something else. And so if you really want that ASM 252, you've just got to say no to certain things. Unless, again, you just have lots of disposable income. Uh, in that case, yeah, buy whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. But for most of us, it means, again, choosing between different options. Something that is helpful also in setting goals, studies have shown that it's important to set specific goals in order to achieve the best performance. So in other words, it's more important to say, I really want to get ASM 252 than just to say more generally, oh, I would like to have more valuable older keys. The more specific you are, the more that you hone in on the target, and the more likely you're able to achieve that goal and meet that target. Goals are also helpful because they improve mental health. You know, when you set a goal and then you reach that goal, all of a sudden you have a lot of joy and satisfaction and motivation. It's really encouraging. Uh, and of course, this is why it's important to set attainable goals. If you set goals that are unlikely that you're going to be able to meet, you know, so you set a goal in 2023, I want to do an action comics number one, first appearance of Superman. I mean, sure, you can set that goal, uh, but it's unlikely anyone watching this video is going to actually be able to make that happen this upcoming year. Hey, maybe if you set that goal for 10, 15, 20 years from now and you start working towards it, you might be able to achieve that goal. But probably you're not going to in 2023. But if you set that as your goal, and then you obviously fail at reaching it, then instead of being encouraged by your goal, you're instead depressed, you're demotivated, and then you end up kind of abandoning the whole goal setting process. And so make sure you set reasonable goals. And obviously that's going to be different for each one of us, depending on our different economic situations or our different time situations. I mean, we're all in different boats. But think of what is a reasonable goal for you that would stretch you a little bit to hit. Studies have also shown that it's good to set goals that do stretch you. And so maybe you feel like on the cusp of getting ASM 252. You know, stretch yourself to try to hit that. Uh, but maybe, yeah, maybe you have a bigger goal in mind and that's an attainable one for you. Well, then stretch yourself to hit that. Maybe for you, ASM 252 is out of reach and that's totally fine. Think of a smaller goal that you can hit, a $10 or $20 key that you really want. You know, it doesn't really matter what the goal is, but it's just helpful to set those goals to hit them to improve our mental health, our joy, our motivation, not only in comic collecting, but in all of life. Goals can also help improve mental health because they help you feel more in control of your life and your decision making. As you make a plan to get an ASM 252 or again, whatever it might be, then all of a sudden you feel like, hey, I, I can do this. I've got a real plan to make this happen. Whereas if you don't make those goals, you're probably never going to get that book. And you're just going to wonder, man, why does everybody else get that copy of 252 and, and I don't? And then you'll just feel discouraged and, and frustrated all the time. And obviously for some of us, it's going to take longer to get whatever goal that we want. But I think for the majority of us, if we really exercise discipline and self-control, then we can add some cool comics to our collection. And so that brings me to my own comic collecting goals for 2023. So there are three goals that I'm going to share with you. So my first goal is to get any one of my top five grails of all time. 
And I feel that three of them are within reason at this point in my life for 2023. So that would be Fantastic Four number five, which is the first appearance of Doctor Doom, X-Men number one, which of course is the first appearance of the X-Men and Magneto, or Journey into Mystery number 83, the first appearance of Thor. And I feel like this is a great time to be on the hunt for big books like that, because as probably all of you know, the comic book market is really experiencing a correction right now. And so each of these books are thousands of dollars less than they were just a year ago. Now, the other two books in my top five, which are Amazing Fantasy 15, the first appearance of Spider-Man, and Detective Comics number 27, the first appearance of Batman, have also experienced this correction. But despite that, I think they're still pretty unattainable for me in 2023. But I do look forward maybe 5, 10, maybe for Detective 27, yeah a few decades down the road, sometime before I die, I really would like to add those two books to my collection as well. However, like I said, I think it is reasonable for me to get one of those other three books this year, but it's going to take a battle plan. And so setting that goal has had me starting to create this plan of action. And so some of the things that I know that I need to do is to be more active at listing some of the books that I don't care about so much for sale on eBay uh, because it's just easy to just say, oh, I'll get to it sometime. And just to have this big stack of books that you want to sell at some point just sitting on my shelves. But all of a sudden having this goal of getting one of those three has all of a sudden started to renew the motivation within me to start listing more frequently. And of course those sales are what's going to give me the money that I can put towards getting one of those three books. I also realize I need to organize my collection better because I've got books and boxes that I know I want to sell. You know, there's this first appearance of certain characters. I'm like, oh, I'd, I would like to sell that book, but I don't know which one of these boxes it's in. You know, one of the hardships of any comic collector is just having boxes and boxes of comics. And I want to get better organized so that I can quickly access the books that I need to sell. And so those are just a few of the steps that I'm planning to take this year to get one of my grails. But those steps have only come into my mind because I've started to set a goal. Again, if you don't really set goals, you're probably just going to wander aimlessly. And yeah, you might pick up a book that's cool here and there, or maybe lots of books cool that are here and there, but you're not going to maximize your potential for building your collection. All right, number two, I would like to acquire either a copy of Marvel Spotlight number five, which is the first appearance of Ghost Rider, in about a 7.0 condition, or uh, a special Marvel edition number 15, the first appearance of Shang-Chi, in about a 9.0 condition. And that book has really come down over the past year. And so I'd really like to get one of those. Uh, probably if I had to choose, it would be the Marvel Spotlight five. I mean, uh, yeah, it would be that, not probably. I'd really like to get that. I've missed out on it a couple of times, uh, but that's another book that has been corrected. And so I feel like now is a good time to maybe get it uh, because once he comes to the MCU, of course, that book's going to go uh, probably way back up. I mean, you know, we're in uncertain financial times. So there's no really guarantee that that would happen, but I have a feeling it would. And so I would like to get that book in 2023, especially since I've had so many near misses with it. But uh, a, a nice uh, a consolation prize would be that first appearance of Shang-Chi. And so my third goal is to make sure that I don't allow this hobby to affect my relationships with my family. Of course, it's really easy to get consumed with comic collecting and either devote too much time or mental energy to it and neglect the ones that really matter. And I want to make sure that doesn't happen. I felt like I'd done a, a much better job of that in the second half of 2022, and I want to continue that into 2023 and, and even get better. And so I've started to think about you know, a battle plan to make sure that happens. So something I want to do, for example, is set better boundaries of when I get online to hunt for comics and make sure it's not too many hours in the day and make sure it's not hours of the day that I could be spending with my kids but limit the number of hours, 
and limit the time that I give those hours. So not just at any time I can run on my computer and start hunting for comics. Something I've been getting better in, but just want to improve in in 2023. Uh, something else that I could do is when I'm with my family and I, and I feel myself drifting off and thinking about this deal that might happen that I'm looking forward to, to see that as like an alarm that, uh-oh, uh, if you're thinking about comics when you're with your family, you're probably giving too much of your mental energy to that and too much of your time, and you need to just take a step back. And if you saw my last video, it's one of the reasons actually that I don't do a lot of auctions anymore uh, because when I do those, me personally, yeah, I don't think this is for everyone, but for me, like I have a hard time not thinking about them when I'm away from the computer, like wondering, oh, did somebody put in a higher bid? or then being demoralized if I lose an auction and then I go have dinner with my family after losing an auction and I'm a grumpy dad. You know, like I don't want those things to happen. So again, just setting healthy boundaries with the hobby so that I'm just a good husband and father and friend. And so those are some of my goals with the hobby in 2023, but I would be interested in hearing what are your goals, either books that you're hoping to add to your collection or just other things you want to do with the hobby. Tell me in the comments below what you would like to see happen in 2023 for you. All right, well, that's going to bring us to an end of the video. Hope this was helpful. Of course, if you haven't subscribed, I'd appreciate if you consider doing so. We're getting closer and closer to 500 subscribers, which is when I'll be giving away five copies of Spider-Woman number one. And all you have to do to have a chance at one of those books is to subscribe to this channel and leave a comment on this video. And I'll leave another video in the description below that will give you more details about that giveaway. So thanks for watching. And as always, I look forward to the next one.